All right, so International Firefighters Day is observed on May 4th. It was instituted after a proposed, uh, so, sorry, after a proposal was emailed out around the world on January 14, 1999, due to the death of five firefighters in a tragic um, circumstance in a bushfire in Australia. On December 2nd, 1998, a tragic event shook the Linton community, Australia, and the world. Firefighters in Linton, Australia, a populated region in Victoria, were fighting a large bush um, fire and called for mutual aid. This urgent mutual aid call brought the Glen Long West Fire Brigade to the scene, not knowing the despair and tragedy that was in store. Gary Vett that vet chris evans stuart davison jason thomas and matthew armstrong all loaded into the company's truck they were part of the strike team and were being sent to help um, extinguish the flames as the five headed into the hot zone the wind suddenly switched direction engulfing the truck in flames and killing all five members Now, this unfortunate incident is what inspired jj edmondson to bring about an international holiday called international firefighters day to support the lives lost and dedicated firefighters who risk their lives every single day to save life and property so happy international firefighters day i didn't know this history up until today of, of course, well, now yes, it's, it's all over the world. Oh, okay, <laughs> it's all over the world. You should just you should cut cut out people's so slap. No, I'm just asking. I'm just, I, I, you I know when you watch well. movies, how you see firefighters? Have you seen their drills? Yes, no. When they climb on ladders in two minutes. Everything like once they hear the, the bell here? ring. Is it the same drill here too? Uh, we don't know. But I mean, well, no matter what you're doing, you drop everything it's and just head out. That's how, that's Although how I, I was attending one firefighter class where mm -hmm. they were training um, us how to co um, control fire, especially kitchen fire, mm -hmm. you know. So it was quite interesting. Like if your pot, like your bleaching oil and it gets up in flames, what are you supposed to do? You're not supposed to, yeah, you're not supposed to pour water. Then you can take a wet blanket, just cover it. If your gas probably is, you know, the fire is going out of control just take a wet blanket cover it up or you cover the pot you know i suppose what people used to do yeah, then water i saw a video on instagram i think yesterday when a boy was saying that ah thank god for women no he entered the kitchen and he almost bought but you know that was really scary because he was taking the pot with the flame very close to the gas yes. tank a lot of people are not educated when it comes to handling fire. Fire especially hazard. kitchen fire mm. especially kitchen fire God help us. God help us. All God right. Us. So let me start with you, Elsie Godwin. What okay. Did you find? So what I found um, is uh, good and bad news at the same time. Um, pastor gets life imprisonment for raping twelve year olds. So of course it's, it's <laughs> bad because rape is not good news in any way, shape, or form. Whether you are um, recapping it or reporting it, mm -hmm. um, but I like that he's getting life imprisonment for this offense. So an Ikeja domestic violence and sexual offenses court on Wednesday sentenced a 54-year-old pastor, Michael Ulisse, to life imprisonment for raping his friend's 12-year-old twin daughters. Mm -hmm. Delivering judgment, Abiola Shola Doye described Mr. Ulisse, the assistant pastor of the anointed chosen vessel ministry in Okota, Lagos, as a serial rapist who took turns raping his friend's daughters. She held that the prosecution had convincingly proved the charges of defilement against Mr. Lisset beyond any reasonable doubt. The judge um, sentenced him to life imprisonment on two count charge bordering on defilement. She said, and I quote, the testimony of the defendant portrayed him as a serial rapist who took turns to defy survivors. What a disloyal and untrustworthy pastor who shamelessly and audaciously had sexual intercourse with his friend's children who were entrusted in his care. His conduct is unbecoming of a pastor. Having been found guilty as charged with the two offenses, the defendant is hereby sentenced to life imprisonment. So yeah, mm. that's my what's in the news. Mm. That's really um, crazy. Yes, it's crazy. And like I said, it's, you know, it's a good and bad news. So I have, I, I have a friend, um, Timmy, she's, she's grown now to become a very big, you know, counselor in the space of, you know, getting people out of abuse and all of that mm -hmm. she she said it several times that repeatedly 
you know, um, her pastors, when they would take her to certain churches and all of that, repeatedly different pastors at some point had carnal knowledge of her. They had they, they raped her. Do you understand? So I don't know why we keep trusting because we feel like there's a pastor. How hmm. did it even get to the point where these twins were like in, his care. In, in, yes, in, 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 in a close proximity with him? Because it, you, it's, it's, it's just this thing that we look at people at face value and say, oh, because he's a man of God. Because he's a man of God does not stop. That, has, that man of God, that's because he's a man of God has allowed so many men to get away with, with all of these things. things. Yeah. I remember when I was working, um, I don't want to mention the name of the company, that was in 2018. We had a story sharing session and that session basically is just about individuals who want to share their story, tell their stories and we're going to say, you know what, whatever is happening right here ends here. So this lady, you know, was telling us what happened to her. When she was young, her pastor raped her. She took it, she went back Hala. home to tell her mom and her dad, because they were the ones that sent her to, to the, the pastor mm -hmm. for um, deliverance service, that for right. counseling. Then the guy raped her. She came back home to tell her mom and her dad that this is what this guy did to me. They said they lie. That would you be lying at this lie against one of them. They dragged her to his house, mm. made her kneel down to, to beg him. Yeah, to apologize. She was like that day she moved out. She was a teenager. She said she moved out of that house. She ran away from home and told everybody that asked. This was what happened and this was what my parents did. A lot of parents are in enablers and i don't know why they glorified or they put the whole godly like they say pastors as god now that any little thing go to pastor and then these guys are human beings that don't even have <laughs> sexual orientation or even sexual discipline mm. as flawed as any other human being absolutely mine is yeah let's take your story okay so my story basically is um regarding the three months long strike the three months long ASU strike um so um, the university of benin students actually protested today um today over their um the three month strike and this is really insane because i remember in, Feb in february we were talking about this thing just right before the strike was announced and this is three months already children have been in school for this long and i mean there's a comment that really struck me that meanwhile the minister has said to have paid 100 million naira nomination form for election of 2020 of because their children are not studying in nigeria mm. their children have no business with our educational system and they feel comfortable to allow hundreds and thousands of nigerians if not even millions actually just sit at home doing nothing this is really crazy and then later you say nigerians are lazy youths mm. what are we really going to do about this because the people that we've trusted with all of these things are not really helping out and i mean a lot of students have actually come out to protest and they're even urging more people to come out if it's possible for them to even march to yeah abuja and do this protest it would really help hopefully the government listens hopefully the minister does something about it but i mean something needs to be done before we start to count one year because it has happened before like a long I think, time I ago think it's, it's it happened be nice before if if the students even now gather at the lucky two gates at this point mm. because i guess that's the that's where they that's, that's where the they that, listen that bothers them the most because i mean hmm. they don't have work work right they are home so where if you want them to leave the tool then you i mean okay let's not get into that point but remember when we had dr digbess on, on the show when he was talking about because you mentioned um you said something about when are we going to get out of this point and how yeah. um they are able to cough out 100 million for their forms right yes. and he said something around the fact that for them education is not an immediate gratification right so if you if any government decide to spend money in education we will not begin to see the impact until say Yes, 50 they are years for low hanging fruits. down the line, right? Absolutely. And of course, you would have left the, the office, office mm -hmm. and then nobody's going to remember that, oh, you are the one who initiated mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. thing. So, when it comes to any government that is going to take education serious, it has to be a government that sees the future, that is not looking at, like you said, low hanging yes. fruit. And it's also claim, looking beyond, Thank you. This is, you know, this is even becoming really ridiculous. Until we get to that point, nothing is going to be done because Absolutely. to fix education, <laughs> education is a long term. Um, um, business game, yeah, it's a not, long -term game. It's not a and then, so th I'm really, no I'm really afraid because the people that have gotten this, um, they've gotten good education in Nigeria are getting better offers abroad, of course, and a lot of them are relocating, mm -hmm. right? So, what is the faith of Nigeria? Mm. 
if the, ch the young ones that we're expecting to go to school are not being given an opportunity to be in school then the people that have actually graduated do not have jobs and then the ones that now have good that have been able to train themselves with other things are getting good offers outside nigeria mm. which means that in the next 10 20 years talking about this things really gets me emotional because yes so many people will relocate what mm. happens to the people that can't afford it we go empty together. No, no. sentencing, death, <sighs> um, sorry, date fixed for August 22nd. This is, um, remember the special aid to the governor of Ogun State, Abi Demi Rufai, you know, says, I mean, they can expect his jail sentence and there are speculations that he might be going to be, he might be there for a very long time after he pled guilty for the COVID-19 fraud in the U.S. So... Let's keep mm. an eye on that. On that note, we'll take a break now. When we come back from the break, we will be discussing the Twitter under the new government of Elon Musk. <laughs> the new ownership. Stay with us. We'll be right back.